So we have two very different pictures of the mean variance frontier. Let's try to relate them a little bit to get some more intuition for how these two pictures work. Let's compare the frontiers. So first of all, this object R star, which in our new state space picture was proportional to X star. Where does that show up in the old fashioned mean variance frontier? Well, uh, one of its defining properties, it is the smallest. It's the minimum second moment return. How do I know that? Well, in state space, second moment is the length of a vector, and R star is the, since it's orthogonal here, it is the smallest length vector. You can prove that algebraically, or you can just look at the picture. R star is the minimum second moment return. Well, that property lets you plot it. Second moments, the mean of R squared is the, is the mean of R squared plus the variance squared. So uh, second moments are circles around the origin in mean standard deviation space. So R star is the minimum second moment. It's the return closest to the origin. There she is. R star, the most interesting return of all, is on the bottom section of the mean variance frontier. Next, let's think of this three-way decomposition. Any return is R star W E star plus a residual. How does that look? Well, we start with any return. <clears throat> we start with R star. R star plus W R E star, that sweeps out the mean variance frontier. So that brings us, for a typical return here, that brings us along the mean variance frontier. And then, as here we went R star plus W R E star, now we add the eta. Where does that show up here? <clears throat> well, eta, the residual, that is a mean zero and price zero object. Mean zero means it doesn't add any mean to us. Uh, price zero means it's an excess return. Furthermore, the eta, it's mean zero, and it's uncorrelated with the other items. So it's a regression residual. It is exactly what we saw before. It's the idiosyncratic component, if you will. It's, there's, you can run a regression of returns on the mean variance frontier, and it's the uh, unsystematic component. So we see, again, the, the uh, theorem only systematic returns are priced. The systematic component generates a mean. The eta is the unsystematic, if you will, component, the part that's not priced. More confusions. R star, what, it's down on the bottom section of the mean variance frontier. Is that wrong? No. R star is not anyone's portfolio return, and it's not the market portfolio return. You know, tip, when we think of the CAPM or think of portfolios, often we'll have to add lots of assumptions, but we often think about portfolios being up there as being the good part. R star is not anyone's portfolio. It's a return that carries pricing information. A good word for it is R star is the return on the marginal utility mimicking portfolio. And that's different from the portfolio in your pocket. R star is X star over the price of X star. X star was the projection of the discount factor on X. And the discount factor is something like consumption growth to the minus gamma. So the discount factor goes down when returns on your portfolio go up. It's a measure of hunger. It's a measure of bad times. The discount factor is negatively correlated with the returns you might hold in your portfolio. R star is negatively correlated with returns on the top half of the frontier. So R star, it's a portfolio that carries pricing information. It's a portfolio that measures margin utility, but it's not a portfolio that anybody holds. Um, another co comparison, our, our new portfolio in, in the mean variance, if we have excess returns only, the excess return mean variance frontier is, of course, just R e star itself, W times R e star, that's the mean variance frontier of excess returns, which is the one that I did algebraically. So how does that compare? The mean variance, the mean variance frontier of excess returns is just W times R e star. R e star was a mean, a second moment matrix times R. Lagrangian methods, we got mean variance uh, uh, efficient portfolios are a constant times a mean prime, a covariance matrix times excess returns. We're oh so close. And in fact, it's just two lines of algebra to show that these two approaches give exactly the same mean variance frontier as well as the same flavor, a mean, a covariance matrix inverse. So uh, we are looking at the same object. And you can view things in mean and variance space or in state space. It's kind of fun to compare where each lies in the other space, uh, but nothing tremendously different about it.